Hey guys, uh, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, it's a real privilege to be speaking to this army of OpenStreetMap people because uh, you're the reason why we're able to build this technology. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story of, of, of how we've got to where we are and, um, and, and, the, and, the, and the, the fantastic um, piece of work we've done, I think, in establishing OpenStreetMap as the data store. That's the, that's the main point of this presentation, is that we've standardized health facility data and made OpenStreetMap the data store. So the story starts for me in South Africa in the early 2000s, where you know, we were all very enthusiastic about the internet and the opportunities that it held. And, um, but there were many organizations all working together. And, and so we, we saw the vision of what was possible here. And, and this is where OpenStreetMap has provided the interoperability to make it really work. Um, so at that time, I, um, I was uh, working for, with a primary healthcare organization, and I got access to um, primary healthcare workers, and I understood this user story um, of, of people in the townships who needed to access health. So we took this, I've used this user story this human-centered design to guide all the work that we've done. So all the technology and all the data has come in behind this particular user story. And because of the geolocation of the data, this lady or these girls are able to do a lookup, find a facility, go there for what they need. And as open data, it's, it's really powerful. So this need has been identified by, in, in the Lancet Global Health, um, Camry Wellcome Trust, managed to put together a database of 4,908 hospitals throughout Africa, but they can't tell you which services are in those hospitals, okay? And, and that's been identified as a priority, and that's our mission, is to improve the quality of the data in those hospitals so that we know where the services are. So, so this is the typical situation that you've got, and um, in the past, what's been happening is that national bodies have been trying to understand their lists. It hasn't been regional or global. And, and as a result of that, you've got lots of different stakeholders all trying to do the same thing, and their data sets are not interoperable, and, and the data formats are different, and, and this is where OpenStreetMap provides the interoperability. And, and, and that's, that's what we've, um, we've jumped on. So we've built this standardized way of es establishing a baseline of health facility data. It's in the region of 20 attributes, and it describes the services available, the staff complement, the geolocation, and, and who runs it. Um, and, and so this is a, a screenshot from this morning showing you know, the number of facilities that have been put into OpenStreetMap. And Tim is going to describe um, explain how the, the technology works, but essentially we're syncing with OpenStreetMap. So if someone puts something in to OpenStreetMap in China, it'll come through here on health sites and, and vice versa. So the, as, as sure I'm sure many of you can um, empathize with this situation. You know what you want to do, but you don't have the funds to build it. And for us, we were um, blessed with um, funding from Digital Square, which is a division of PATH, and they said, right, go, we think this is a global good that, that should be supported. And um, that gave us the opportunity to establish the data lifecycle with Mehri and, and the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team helped us establish that attribute list to sync with OpenStreetMap. And in addition to that, we are pushing the data to HDX We've established an ODK mobile data collection tool that pushes the data straight into OpenStreetMap. And, in, and then finally, we ran a, a pilot in Senegal in July and began to understand the complexities and, and the challenges around um, establishing a data collaborative and giving people in the country ownership of their data and their health facilities. So, uh, this is the actual um, the screen that, um, that Mary's um, attribute list is now allowing us to capture on the site. And um, 
this is the, these are the attributes then that the Senegalese uh, group uh, went out into the field uh, with these enumerators. And, and you know, as you can imagine, this was one of the most fantastic parts of the whole journey that we've been on, is to actually be with people in the field and, and, and working with them to, to capture real data and provide the value to the, to the Ministry of Health and everyone on the ground. So the red dots are, are what we collected. And, and this is just the extract being viewed in QGIS. And, and the group went to some crazy places on horseback, and they saw camels in the desert in Senegal, and you know that's where the health facilities were. They had to get to them. Um, oh yeah, we've got a problem with the PDF. Um, that's not good. Uh, I don't think it's downloaded correctly. Um, so I will Just carry on speaking. Okay. Can we plug that into the... Sorry, guys, we're just going to take a minute here just to, to get this PDF downloaded correctly. It's on the other side, I think. There's a 3G. Yeah, I mean, the screen, just plug it in. I don't think we can use that. Um... Is there an AV person here that can help us? Okay. Just on, let me just get in there. Can we not just plug the HDMI cable in? No. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. We'll just copy it on. Oh, no. That's this one. Okay. USB drive. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, so it is all there. Maybe while Mark's sorting out the, the um, technology on the laptop, I can just explain a bit about the technology we used to build the site in, uh, we'll, in the time that I would have given at the end of the talk. So um, to build health sites, um, we did look at services. I think there was a presentation on Athena. I don't know if any of you have heard of Athena, which is an Amazon service, which gives you like a Postgres database synchronized with OpenStreetMap. But I, th I think in, when, when we, we looked, it was only synchronized once a week something like that, and we wanted something that was a live synchronization with OpenStreetMap. So um, we uh, used some work that was done by originally an intern and then a staff member of Cartosa, um, Etienne Kumail, um, uh, called Docker OSM, and this tool basically creates a live mirror of OSM um, on your own infrastructure in a Postgres database. Um, and you can set some mapping rules to filter which data actually gets mirrored. So um, with using this, we were able to mirror all the health sites tagged data into a Postgres database behind, um, behind the site. Um, and then we used another tool that we wrote called OSM Enrich, because the importer um, that, that we, uh, Docker OSM, doesn't get the timestamps and usernames of people who create the features. So OSM Enrich goes and fetches those and adds them um, to the database. Um, Maybe Mark can pick up and then I'll carry on telling you more about the techni technical Thanks, solution. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, all right, guys. So, so this group did an amazing job, and I'm going to speed forward through these last slides. Um, but we got some really great information that wasn't there in the past, and now it's, it's um, geolocated. Um, so this is the data collaborative I was talking about. Um, 
with Geomatica and OpenStreetMap Senegal being the local partners, Geomatica is a, a, a digital agency specializing in GIS solutions, and um, Carto NG is a, a, a humanitarian organization based in Chambéry that also manages data and, um, and mobile data collection um, work. And, and so Geomatica and Carto NG worked with OpenStreetMap Senegal, and, and the data is being fed into the health sites framework and visualized and shared. Um, so the data that we're pushing into HDX is, is one of the most popular data sets on HDX. Everybody wants the standardized data, baseline data. Epidemiologists find it tremendously useful. Okay, so you can just grab a data set and you can pull it into your QGIS application and you can begin layering in, um, you know, world pop data sets and, and what have you to, to establish your insights. Um, so this is how we can help you. We can provide the, the data extracts and, the, and the, the, the country statistics showing, you know, where is Liberia with regards to health facility data? How can we see it improve? Uh, how can we focus our attention to improve data in areas where it's poor? Um, we have an open API for everyone to make use of that, that Tim's team has done a great job in, in developing. Um, how you can help us is um, obviously using the system and really importantly sharing user stories. So, so if you can share something like I referenced at the beginning of the presentation, in, in the form of a user story that is something we can use to drive the development of the data on the ground. Um, so, Tim put a lovely diagram together for us. Well, I, I, I helped. I've, I've got some input on this as well. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the classic challenge that we've got here is, is we're replacing the old top-down method with the community-driven bottom-up. And we're meeting in between, and we're finding ways to, to mesh and, and optimize the data and, 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 and improve the quality of it. Um, Tim. Yeah, so quickly, um, I know that we're probably running out of time. You're going to wave furiously at me when you... Yes, okay. Um, so just for the geeks in the room who probably want to know about the geek stuff, um, that's where I come in. Um, and d this is just a little diagram to explain how we put the site together. So as I was explaining, we built, we built this Docker OSM, which is a, a, like a real-time mirror of um, OpenStreetMap um, data for a specific um, attribute type. Um, and uh, then together with OSM Enrich, which is another tool we built, which collects the, the usernames and timestamps for the, the change sets, um, we basically were able to establish uh, like a, a local mirror um, of whatever's going into OSM, updated at two-minute intervals. And um, in the original version of Health Sites, we had our own like uh, extract and like dump into our database system, and it was a very tedious manual process. And now it's completely live and automatic. Um, and in addition, we've also have we use the uh, um, OSM API to write any changes that happen on our platform straight into OSM, so that if you collect on the mobile um, like an ODK or if you change something on our website, um, it just gets pushed straight through to OSM and then synchronized back into our database. So it's quite a cool and we think clever kind of way to do it. It was actually inspired by Nate from HOT um, and uh, it took us a few years to actually be able to implement it with the help of, of the funding that we got from Digital Square. Um, uh, and uh, this is a bit more detail. I won't go through all the steps, but it basically kind of uh, shows the, the workflow of how uh, Docker OSM works. We basically start with a world PBF file or a PBF file for the country, what have you, do an initial load, and then it goes off and fetches the two-minute dumps, uh, the, the diff files from OSM, and applies them to our database at regular intervals, um, and then puts everything into post, uh, Postgres and PostGIS. Um, and one other nice thing we have is that also the Docker uh, tools that we've built um, support database replication. So um, we've got it set up so that um, if you're like a, a friend of ours or whatever, you're a friendly person, we can, you can replicate the database um, to your own infrastructure. So imagine you're a health facility in uh, Nigeria and you want to have the, like the global data set um, on your local machine because you don't have the bandwidth to work with it over a web service. You can actually synchronize the database to a database running in your environment, um, and it's just a database replication between our copy and your copy, and then work with it in QGIS, and that's what my last couple of slides are, just showing you some kind of things that you can do. So this 
This is just a slide made in QGIS, just of all the points that we've got um, around the world. I think there's 540,000-odd uh, 540, point data um, uh, records and then a, um, another couple of hundred thousand uh, polygon records. Um, and you can already see a lot of useful things just by having dots on a map on your own computer. You can see where the gaps are. You can see where there's poor people in the, you know, in Sahara. They've got to, they've got to go probably for days to get to a clinic. Um, uh, and then I just did some sort of other example, another example just to show you the kinds of things that we could do with a rich data set like this. So this analysis, I took um, all the countries of the world, um, I got the 2018 population levels and accounted how many health sites were in that country and then just divided the, um, the population by the, uh, by the number of health sites or the number of health sites by the population to see how many uh, uh, health facilities per capita there were. And, um, you know, you get these great insights just from simple analysis that you can do by bringing the data offline and putting it on your desktop. And the whole thing is just um, so seamless and smooth between, you know, people putting information in from the field, uh, data coming in from uh, ID or um, uh, JOSIM or wherever people are editing um, OpenStreetMap data into a platform where we can uh, be very topic specific and show you information that relates to the things that you care about as a healthcare specialist, um, down to the point of you actually being able to bring the data into your own institution and work with it, you know, directly there. So I hope just that, that these couple of slides just inspire you to think about maybe uh, taking the same approach for other um, uh, uh, areas or to come and join us and do cool stuff on, on the health sites platform and see like um, what other cool visualizations and reports and useful pieces of information we can pull out of the data that goes into OpenStreetMap. Because at the end of the day, OpenStreetMap is just a database and it doesn't, like, the value comes when you take the data and do stuff with it. And that's what we really want to try and encourage on the, on the health sites platform. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um. Wow, you made it really easy. I didn't have to give you a warning or anything. Thank you, um, Tim and Mark. So we actually have time for questions. If anyone, yet yeah, at the back. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if you've had any um, collaboration with the HISP group in Oslo or um, in their DHIS2 um, system, and because it would be incredibly powerful to link the statistics that they include in their platform to your map. Yep, thank you. Um, so that's right on the roadmap, establishing that, uh, that fire standard to sync with DHIS2 which is exactly what we are looking to achieve. So a Ministry of Health can pull in OpenStreetMaps data and then understand um, how its list varies and, and, and optimize and validate on top of that. If you've got some contact people for us to talk to there, um, we'd happily get involved and engaged with them as well. Uh, we still have time if there's any other questions. I can break out the code and do code walkthroughs if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, if there's no more questions, then um, yeah, you'll see Mark and Tim around the rest of the conference. But thank you very much thank you. for thank you. the talk. Thank you. Sure.